Welcome back to another LP Gallery tutorial. In this part three or final video on how to enhance and color correct images using Windows 10 Photo App, we are going to focus on fixing images that have a very strong color cast. So you can see that right here. Again, we have a split view. The left part is the original image. The right part is how we're going to enhance it. And we're also going to do some red eye removal and we're going to use the spot fix tool to help fix up some nice blemishes and some dust and dirt that are on pictures. Okay, so let's get started. Now, even though this picture was taken in early evening, so the snow is not as bright, it shouldn't have such a strong blue cast. That's an inherent problem of a lot of digital cameras and winter shots. So we're going to have to fix this. We have to remove that strong blue cast. So let's go to edit, create. Let's go to edit. We're going to immediately jump to filters. We're going to do the auto enhance. And you can see the auto enhance kind of sharpen that, but it also made it a little bit darker. So we don't want that at all. So we're going to undo and we're going to do the adjustments ourselves. So I'm going to go to adjustments and I'm going to go to color. I'm going to take my color ramp slider all the way over. You can see there's a lot of blue. We're going to reset that. We're going to open this up. Let's take the yellow all the way over to 50. Let's take the magenta over to 50. See what that does. And again, we're just going to show you the tint in here. So this looks a lot better. It's a little too much magenta, but you can see it's a little whiter. So we're going to reset it. And when we do that, you can clearly see a strong blue color cast in there. Okay. So it's clear we're going to need a lot of yellow because we have a lot of blue. So the opposite of blue is yellow. So we're going to take the yellow all the way over. And 100% is a little too much, but you can see that we need a lot of yellow. So I'm going to take it back. And I'm actually going to take it back only down to about 90. I think we need that. Now we're going to add some magenta. We're going to take it all the way up. Too much magenta. We're going to take that down. What the magenta will do is counterbalance a little bit of the yellow. So it'll make the snow a little bit whiter. So we're going to take it down, I think maybe about 40. So the snow looks, looks pretty white and pretty neutral. Now, I don't think we're going to bother the saturation. If I take the saturation up, what's going to happen, of course, we're going to get a lot of blue. So we don't want any saturation in. Okay, let's open the light slider here and let's take a look. Again, we're not going to use the slider bar here because it'll make it too dark or too light all in one shot. And we need to control all the variables. So let's start off with shadow. If I'd make the shadow lighter, we can see more of the trees, but then we start losing the footprints. So I'm going to make the shadow a little darker. So we're dragging to the left about a minus 10, I think. Now let's do the highlights. Now again, if I take the highlights to the right, I'm going to blow at everything. It makes the snow nice and bright and white, but we lose all the footprints and we're losing a lot of the detail. So we're actually going to take it down to the left. We're actually going to kind of bring in more midtones. So we don't want to lose our footprints in this. So I'm going to take it down, let's say maybe about a minus five. That looks okay. And let's go up to our contrast. Because we took our highlights down, we can take our contrast up. So let's take the contrast up, not by much, maybe about five. A little brighter, but not too bright, because again, we don't want to blow everything out. Okay, so about five, I think is pretty good. And the last one, of course, is our exposure. Now, exposure, again, you got to be careful, because you can make it too bright and lose everything. Make it too dark. Again, can't see anything. So I think maybe about five. Okay, now again, I don't want to make this too bright. If I go this way, it looks like a bright sunny day. And this was taken in the evenings. And you should get the feeling that the sun is definitely setting. So here, I think we get the idea that it's an evening shot. We can still see the footprints in there. And the snow looks fairly neutral. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to undo that all. That's the original. And we're going to redo that. So again, with winter shots, you always got the problem with the blue cast. So this is a simple way to deal with that blue cast. Okay, let's move on to the next picture. So again, we got another winter scene here. You can tell the sun is starting to set. We're in shadow. So again, we're getting that strong blue snow in there. But we're also losing the color in the vegetation. Now, a lot of this vegetation is brown already, but it should look brown. It shouldn't look like this brown with a blue tinge in it. So we got to fix that too. Okay, so let's go to Edit Create, let's go to Edit, and let's go to Filters, and we're going to do the Auto Enhance. I think it looks pretty good. It kind of lightened it up, and it sharpened it up a bit, but I think it's a little too over sharp, so I'm going to take it down. Maybe, let's see, about 35, okay? I don't mind the sharpness. It gives us a little detail, 
but I don't like when it's over sharpened. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's go to adjustments and we're going to take our color slider here. We're going to just drag it all the way over. Clearly see there's a lot of blue in there. Okay, we're going to reset that and we're going to open up our color. We're going to do what we always do. We're going to take the yellow about 50, take magenta about 50 and just check it out. Okay, we brighten it up, but you can see we have too much magenta, but already it looks a lot better. And if we look at the vegetation, the brown in the vegetation is more naturally brown, not the kind of brown with a blue tinge to it. So it looks pretty good. Let's reset and let's start working with the yellow. Okay, now just like the other one, you can probably tell with all this blue tinge in the snow, we're going to probably have to move the yellow slider quite a ways over to the right. Okay, so let's do that. Let's take it all the way over. Okay, that's all the way over it's too much let's bring it back just till we start seeing the blue tinge in the snow and i think maybe about 75 should about do it okay that looks pretty good and now we're going to add some magenta and magenta again will add to the whiteness so we're going to take the magenta we're going to take it up that's way too much that's not enough so we go in between let's see about 35 i think okay now i'm also looking here also looking at the sky so the snow looks pretty white i like the vegetation i can see it's brown it's a natural looking brown color and i can see that i got a nice sunny spot here that's kind of nice and bright it looks pretty good and we're also looking here we don't want this to be too yellow or too magenta and that looks pretty good to me and we're not going to bother with the saturation because we already know that if we grab our saturation slider here and take it all the way over we're going to put the blue back in there so we don't need any saturation okay let's go to our light panel so once again, I'm going to start with the shadow and I think I'm going to take the shadow just a bit up. We go here, we get too dark. It goes too dark. You can't see the details. So I'm taking the shadow up, not much, about 10. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. It lightens the picture up, allows me to look deeper into the picture. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Now for the highlights, if I take them to the right and lighten them, I'm going to lose a little detail in the snow. It makes the snow whiter. But I lose a little detail in the snow, I lose a little detail in the vegetation. So what I'm going to actually do is take it to the left a little bit down. So 10 looks pretty good. Okay, so that gives us a little more detail in the snow. So we see a lot of footprints in there. So we want to keep those. Okay, now again, because I take the highlight down, I can always take the contrast up. Let's go to contrast. So I'm actually going to take the contrast up. Makes things a little bit brighter, makes the darks a little darker, the lights a little lighter. So again, we don't want to go too much like this. It's overboard. So let's say not too much, about 10, I think. 10 is about good. Okay, and again, our exposure, that's very powerful. So again, if we overdo it, we're going to blow out our highlights. If we underdo it, it's going to get too dark. So again, being a very powerful tool, we're going to just move it up to maybe about 5. I think that looks pretty good. Now let's see what it looks like. Let's undo all. There is original, and let's redo, much nicer. So the snow is more neutral color. The vegetation is nice and brown as it should be. And we can see we have a lot of variety. If I undo this, you can see the vegetation. There's no variety in the vegetation. It has a strong blue cast, so everything looks the same. So if we redo it, you can see we have some dark brown, some light browns. So we get a lot of contrast and a lot of variation in the vegetation. We get the nice sun peeking through here, so this is much lighter. And we get a lot of detail back here. So we can see the sun really shining on that end right there. So it looks pretty good. Once more, I'm going to undo it and redo it. Okay. And I don't think I'm going to bother with the clarity. Again, that's going to sharpen it a little too much. We can, we can soften it, but I don't think I'm going to bother. So we're going to leave the clarity at zero. Okay. This picture is done. Time to move on to the next one. Now in this one, we're going to be dealing with a sunset. So again, the left half shows you the original picture. The right half is what we're going to do. Now, in cases of sunset, the digital camera has a tendency to go a lot to blue and like magenta. You want the sunset to look a little more natural. So it should be a little more on the orange color. Okay, so our goal is to go from here to here. So here's the full image. And the first thing we're going to do is crop the bottom and a little bit off the left side. So let's click our crop tool. And we're going to take the bottom off. We don't need all that bottom and we're going to bring in the left side like this. I think that looks pretty good. Okay. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go to our filter and let's do the auto enhance. So the auto enhance kind of darken things and sharpen it. I think I kind of like that. So I'm going to keep it. Let's go to adjust. And as usual, we're going to grab our color slider on the ramp, drag it all the way over. You can see there's way too much blue and there's also too much magenta. 
Okay, so let's reset. And let's open the color. So what are we looking for? We're trying to find something neutral. Well, I'm going to be looking at the clouds here and to make sure we don't get too much yellow in the clouds. Okay, so I'm going to grab it all the way over. Now that's way too much. Got lots of nice orange, but we've got too much yellow in the clouds. So I'm going to take it back. And you can see we still got too much yellow in the clouds. Take it back a little more. About 45, I think, looks pretty good. So the clouds still look fairly neutral and uh, not too much yellow in them. I think it looks pretty good. Now, magenta. Now, obviously, if we go to the right like we've been doing, we're going to get way too much magenta. So we actually have to go to the left. That means more to the green. So obviously, it's too green. So we've got to bring it back. Let's say about a minus 15 looks pretty good to me. We've got a nice orange in there. I'm pretty happy. Now, let's try the saturation. Let's see what the saturation is going to do. So I might take that up a bit. So if I take it too much, I get too blue in the clouds. So about around 20. Okay, it looks pretty nice. Okay, so let's reset. A lot of blue, a lot of magenta. Let's redo, and we get a more natural environment. More orange here, as it would naturally be. Clouds look more natural. So let's move on to the light panel. Now for the shadows, I don't think I'm going to take them up. I think I'm going to actually take them down. It's a little darker, so it kind of frames the picture better. So I'm going to take the shadow down, maybe about a minus 10. Okay, so we get a little more darkness here. So that focuses the uh, viewer to look more in this area. So I'm kind of happy with that. Okay, so how about the highlights? Well, we can easily blow out our highlights. If we go too far to the right. So what I'm going to do, of course, is add the highlights in. So I'm going to take them down. I'm going to go to the left. And let's see. I think a little more, maybe about a minus 20. Okay, so let's reset that. And you can see that adds a little more detail to the cloud. So let's redo that. Pretty happy with that. I'm always a big fan of clouds, so I really like the clouds that stand out. Okay, so let's go to the contrast. Here we can take it up a bit. So not much, maybe about 15. That brightens it up a bit. And again, the exposure, got to be careful. We don't want to blow everything out. We don't make it too dark. So maybe about 5. I think it looks really good. Okay, so we reset. And again, it's very subtle, but it kind of darkens it, makes the cloud stand out pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now let's take a look at the clarity. Do we need some clarity? Well, let's see. If I take it this way, I'm going to sharpen the details a bit. And the other way softens it. So I think I will put a little more detail. I'm going to sharpen it a bit. Makes the ripples in the water stand out a little bit more. That may be about 20. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so we're going to undo all. Let's redo all, and we get that. This looks more natural in color. We got nice ripples here that are fairly sharp in detail, and the clouds look a lot more natural. Okay, now we've got one more to do. Okay, so this is going to be our final picture that we're going to color correct. And you can see we do have a bit of a blue cast in there. So again, this is the original. This is where we want to take it. So we got to look for things that are neutral so we don't make them too magenta or too yellow. And that'll be mostly things like right here. All these stones, they should look more natural, should be more along the gray line, and they shouldn't have a tint. We're also going to watch for the sky so we don't get a magenta or yellow cast in the sky. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so let's go to Edit Create. Let's go to Edit. Let's go to Filter. And let's apply an Auto Enhance. Now, the Auto Enhance really sharpens it. I don't think we need, really need the Auto Enhance. I think I can color correct it without the Auto Enhance at all. If I need to sharpen it, I can always do the clarity myself. So, I'm going to undo that. And let's go to Adjustments. And as always, we're going to take the Color Ramp Slider up. So you can see lots and lots of blue in there. So, we have to fix that. So, let's open the Color Panel. And what we're going to do, as always, we'll take this to 50. We'll take this to 50 and see how it looks. Okay, so you can see it looks a little more natural there, but you can see that that's too high in the magenta. But we can tell it looks a lot better. Okay, let's reset, and let's take the yellow. Okay, so what am I watching for? I'm going to watch for the stones here. I'll watch for the sky here. We don't want to go too yellow. Okay, so let's take it all the way over. Let's go too much. That's way too much. Let's start taking it down, and I think 40 looks pretty good to me. Okay, magenta, we're going to take up, but not too much. That's way too much, and that's not enough. And we go somewhere in between. About 25 looks pretty good to me. Okay, let's reset. 
and you can see just doing that it looks much better now also look at the orange here it's kind of a funny color with a blue tint now we redo it looks more orange as it should and i don't think we need to take the saturation up let's go to the light panel now for shadows i think they're a little too dark i'm going to bump it up so i'm moving to the right just a little bit maybe about 10 it just lightens things just a teeny bit and for the highlights of course we you know we can always blow them out so you got to be careful with that so i'm going to take it actually to the left so let's go to about a minus maybe minus 10. i think that looks pretty good now how about contrast well again you got to be careful with the contrast what we really have here is a lot of light areas so i'm going to take the contrast a bit down so let's go maybe about a minus 10. that gives us a little more detail in here which looks pretty good and of course for the exposure again we don't want to blow anything out you don't make it too dark so this is again a very powerful tool so let's just take it out maybe about five okay i think that's pretty good okay let's undo all and let's redo so if we take a look we can see our uh, stones here are very neutral and if we look here you can see the sky is very neutral so we haven't put any yellow or magenta cast okay and i'm going to do it again now take a look at the clothing here especially this clothing here where this is very purple it's a very blue purple and let's redo it and that looks a little more natural and we can see a little more detail in the clothing so i think that looks pretty good i don't think we need any clarity let's see if i take this up no i think that's going to over sharpen it so i don't think we need clarity okay so once more i'm going to undo it so lots of blue uh, we lose the detail in the clothing let's redo it and it looks far more natural okay that's the last image we're going to color correct next one we're going to do a little bit of red eye and then we're going to do the spot fix so here's the image we're going to work in you can see there's clearly a problem lots of red eye there that's from a flash so we have to color correct that let's go to edit great let's go to edit and we have to go to adjustments okay so here's the red eye tool now there's no magic to how this tool works okay it's a very basic process so what it's going to be doing is replacing red with a darker color usually like black or something dark along that line so i'm going to click on the red eye and then of course it just tells you what to do here now this is how it works your pointer now has this blue little circle okay now that icon is very important if we zoom up really close and try to click it like this you can see what it's doing it's replacing the red with black but it's very intermittent it's not very good it's pretty bad there so we have to undo that this is how you want to do this you want to be able to zoom out and you want the blue circle to cover completely the pupil of the eye so you may have to zoom out to do this okay so you want to try to do it in one shot so we just click there and that's done we just click here and that's done and that's all it is okay now those of you who think this is some kind of mysterious tool i'm going to actually show you how it works here we have a nice ladybug missing half of its spots so i'm going to go grab my red eye okay there's my circle and watch what happens i'm going to put the spots back in so again there's no mystery of how this works it's looking for red and replacing it with a darker color that's all it's doing and you can see i'm putting the spots back in in the ladybug and that applies to everything that's red here so if i were to click out here there's no red nothing's going to happen i can do that all day nothing's going to happen but if i click on the red here in the plant you can see it's being replaced so it depends on the brightness of the red and the light and darkness of the red okay so you can see i can replace all the red with black usually when you have a flash and you get the red eye in the pupil it's usually a very bright red if it's a brighter red then it'll be more of a darker black replaced if it's a duller red it won't be as dark and that's basically how it works so no big mystery there okay so that's it for red eye removal you don't need to do a whole bunch because that's basically you just put the target over the eye and you just click okay what i want to do next is the spot fix that's one of my favorite tools and windows 10 photo app actually has a half decent spot fix tool okay so let's start working with that one so with our first picture we're going to replace these little spots we have these little blemishes in the black and white picture which is a very common thing if you're scanning pictures you get dust on your scanner and it shows up here so we have to fix that okay so let's go to edit create let's go to edit let's go to adjustments and there's your spot fix tool 
Okay, now I'm going to zoom in a little closer so you can see we got spots there, there, and there. Okay, so let's click the Spot Fix tool. Once again, it has a blue circle, there. and if you zoom in, the circle gets a little bit smaller. Okay, so this is how the Spot Fix works. What it needs to do is examine the area around the blemish. We've got this white spot. If I get really close and I do this, it's not going to work very well. If I click there, it's not working very well. What it really needs is for that blue circle to examine the pixels in the surrounding area. Then what it does is transfer those pixels over the blemish. Okay, so this is way too close. So what I have to do is zoom out. Now the blue circle appears bigger. I put it over the blemish like this. And so what it's going to do is examine the area around that white little spot and transfer the pixels to it like that. Okay, and that's basically how it works. So sometimes you have to zoom in when you have small spots like that, and sometimes you have to zoom out. Okay, so this one here, I got to be careful. If I go here, you can see what I did. I added some of the dark on the clothing and to the background here, so that doesn't look so good. So I'm going to use the edge of the blue circle here, see if I can get that, and I got it. So sometimes you have to zoom in, and sometimes you have to zoom out. Okay, so again, to zoom into an area, you just point and then scroll your wheel and you zoom in. Okay, so we get rid of that, we get rid of that, we get rid of that. Okay, so let's go up here. And another thing is, it's very important that when you click with your mouse to apply the spot fix, don't move the mouse. Keep it steady, give it a gentle click. Okay, just like that. Okay, don't move the mouse, give it a gentle click. And how about this? I got this line. Obviously, it was a dirt on the scanner. So this is going to be a little hard to get rid of. So I can try clicking here, and all I did is move it. You can see that? It doesn't quite work. So what I'm going to do is zoom out a lot. Now, I'm going to put my blue circle on there, and I'm hoping what the blue circle is going to do is read the edges here, read the edges in the frame, and remove that, but not do anything to the edges. So I'm zooming out enough so they can read all around that blue circle. Give it a click, and... It did a pretty good job okay so it got rid of that blemish and it didn't uh, mess up the edges here so it looked pretty good and let's get rid of that and you see it's not picking up this one at all we already went over this once so here's one of the problems typical of these kind of tools they have a persistent memory so sometimes they remember you remove the spot and um, they won't let you work on that spot so sometimes you have to work somewhere else and then go try to go back to that spot it's not working here. So another thing you can do is to save the file, close it, and then it loses that memory and open it again. So this one is pretty straightforward. It's black and white. They're always easy to clean spots off in a black and white. Okay, so let's try another one. Okay, so here's another picture. It's got spots. And it's going to be a little more tricky because we do definitely have uh, windows here and we have definite uh, horizontal and vertical lines so we don't want to lose those so i'm going to grab the spot fix and let's see how this works so i've got to go right here okay so i'm going to have to go closer okay so again sometimes you have to go closer sometimes you can be a little farther out so let's take a look over here okay so again we have this i don't want to lose these vertical lines here so i'm going to See if I can put it on top and see if it reads that. Didn't do a bad job there. And again, we have a strong vertical here. We don't want to lose that vertical line. It didn't do a bad job there either. So again, so we're watching for these little things. So it is possible for it not to read the vertical line and just make a blob there. So you got to watch for that kind of stuff. Okay. And we got some spots here. Got a spot there. And actually, no, that one didn't work that well. You see it made it a little bit brown in there. So let's see if I can uh, zoom out a bit. No, you see what it did? It just added that. So this one's going to be a little bit tricky. And I think that looks close enough. Fortunately, this is um, a detailed picture, but it's a very zoomed out view. So if you made little mistakes like that, you're not going to notice it. And you can see what it did there. It added that vertical line. That's not right. So we have to see if we can fix that. And you can see it made a bit of a blemish. I'm going to try to go over it. And that looks okay. Okay, and I can always um, save the file, come back, open it, and try it again. Okay, so we got a lot of spots and a lot of horizontal, strong, a lot of strong horizontal and vertical lines that we really have to be careful with.
Okay, see if I can get this one here. I'm going to go right to the edge. And not too bad. Okay, lots of spots here that have to be fixed up. Okay, I think you kind of get the idea with that one. So again, it's one of those situations where when you have strong verticals and horizontals, like in buildings, you can try zooming out and centering your blue icon on it. And hopefully it reads the, the uh, strong horizontal and verticals and won't replace them. But you never know. Sometimes you just have to zoom in. Okay, I think that's enough for this one. Let's move on to the next one. Now in this picture, all we're trying to do is clean up the face a bit. So we have some little residual oud particles and we want to clean that up. So we grab a spot fix. Now in this case, I've zoomed out enough that the blue circle will cover the little imperfections that we want to get rid of. Again, it's easier if you can zoom out and have the circle cover what you need. So I'm going to click here, click there. And again, don't move the mouse. Just put it on top and gently click. Now, sometimes the blue circle will leave an actual circle ghosting pattern. So as it blends the pixels, they actually blend in a circle pattern. So you have to watch for that. And if that happens, you have to just click around it to try to blend those pixels together. Okay, so I'm going to click here, here, there, there. I have a little residual bit here, and it doesn't seem to be taking it out. So that means I'm going to go to the other side, start clicking here. And go try to go back and works. So sometimes you just got to click around and then go back to the part. So I'm going to zoom in and see if I can do any better. And I think that's going to probably be about it. But I think we got rid of it. So that looks pretty good. We got rid of the food stains and it looks much better. Okay, so here's another picture. The child was kind of messy. So let's see if we can't fix that. So spot fix. I'm going to put the blue circle over this and see if I can get it in one shot. Give it a click. Did a pretty good job. I'm going to click around it just to get rid of those other spots. Looks pretty good. Now uh, let's put one here. Get rid of that. And let's try there. That, that didn't do that well. So let's zoom in a little closer. And it's not doing too bad, but you can see, again, we got the persistent memory that keeps applying the same thing, but you just keep clicking around it and hopefully we can get rid of it. Okay, it looks pretty good. And we have a little bit here, so let's try getting that. Not too bad, not too bad. Now let's get a little closer, see if we can't get the bottom part. I'm gonna turn this off and bring that up. Turn it back on. This little tool is always in the way. And that doesn't look too bad. Okay. So again, we could save the file, close it, open it up, and see if we could fix it. So I'm going to just go to different spots and see if it forgets, and see if I can go back here and there. Okay, that looks pretty good. So again, sometimes you just have to click different areas and get it to forget what it just did, and then go back and try to fix it. Okay, that looks pretty good. We have one more to do. Okay, so this is the last picture we're going to work on. Does the spot fix get rid of brown spots? Let's find out. Let's click the spot fix. And again, we don't want to be zoomed in. We want to be zoomed out so that the blue circle can examine the area around the blemish there. Let's give that a click. Did a pretty good job. Let's click here. Pretty good job. Let's go here. Pretty good. And let's go there. Pretty good job there. Okay, let's uh, try it here. And here, here. Let's get rid of some there. And let's try a little bit here, and let's try a little bit there. Okay, now the tricky part is right here. I'm going to zoom in. Okay, now if I try to get rid of this, the problem is the tool is going to examine the beard over here, and it might mix some of the beard into here. So let me see if I can do that. And it just looks like some of the beard here there, so that looks okay. And let's get rid of this one right here. And let's go to that one. And let me zoom in a little closer, get some of these small spots. And let's see if I can't get any closer in there. And that's probably the best I can do. Unless I want to actually bring the beard up, which I can. I can actually click around the beard and the spot and actually bring the beard a little bit up like that. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. So let's undo all this. And that's the original. And let's redo. I think it did a pretty good job. 
So that's the end of the spot fix tool. Now what I want to do is just show you an extreme example of what the spot fix tool can do. So here we have a picture of the same truck. This is the original picture and this is the one that I applied the spot fix to. Okay, so let's see what I did. So in the original picture, let's take a look at here. We have this rail right here with all these little bolts and you can see that I removed them here, 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 and here which is a pretty easy thing to do with a spot fix tool because you have a dark area along with a light area. So it's easy to remove those. You just got to make sure you're following the wood grain pattern. Okay, now if you look up here, you can see we have these holders where the lights used to be. And if you look up here, you can see that I use the spot fix tool to get rid of them. Okay, now if you look over here, you can see that we have some dents in the hood and some rust spots. And you can see that I use the spot fix to get rid of it. Now the big change I did is right here. So if you look over here in this fender, it's really quite rusty. And now if you look over here, I use the spot fix tool to actually remove most of that. Now again, this is an extreme example of the spot fix tool. Something like this, where you're trying to really get rid of the rust, you would have to save a file and close it repeatedly so it doesn't have that memory. But considering it's just a basic spot removal tool, it actually can do some pretty amazing things if you really push that little tool. Okay, so anyways, that's a little bit on the spot fix tool. So once again, in this video, we covered fixing a color cast that you see there. We did a little bit of the red eye and we did some spot fixing. Okay, so thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, give us a like. You might think about subscribing because we always have some interesting videos to show you. So again, thank you for watching and we hope to catch you on the next video.